Hello, good morning. Welcome to today's broadcast. My name is Michelle Carson, speaking to you from the city of Rumia, north of Poland. What a blessed and a wonderful day. And what a great time again. What a beautiful week. God has been so faithful from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today is Friday the 5th of June 2020. And God has kept us till this hour. And the Bible says, He that started the good work in you, He will perfect it. I know that God is going to continue to keep you throughout the weekend until another week. Until another year. Hallelujah. I normally say that the greatest miracle is the gift of life. Every time we wake up in the morning and, and we see another day, it is by the mercies of God. It is by God's faithfulness and God's kindness and God's mercy that we wake up to see another day. And we are ever grateful. We thank God. Let us just give, take a minute and just give glory to God. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for another opportunity you've given unto us to fulfill your purposes on earth. Let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, we magnify your mighty name. We want to thank you for your provisions for us, your sustenance, your protections, your guidance, Lord, much more the gift of life, that we are alive this day is by your mercies, Lord, and we give you glory, praise, and honor, and adoration. Thank you for this day. Your word declares that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we agree that we, your children, shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Thank you, mighty Father. Holy Spirit, lay help upon us, for vain is the help of man. And let Jesus Christ be glorified this hour in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are excited again to be on this morning devotion. This morning, uh, our topic says the prayer of faith. And we're going to talk about the prayer of faith. That uh, phrase, the prayer of faith, is found in the book of James, chapter number 5. And so we are taking our Bible reading from the book of James, chapter number 5. We will read from verses 12 to 18. From verses 12 to 18, James, chapter number 5, uh, in the New Testament, uh, verses 12 to 18. I am reading from the King James Version of the Scriptures. Hallelujah. It says something like this, But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your ye be ye, and let your nay be your nay name lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. 16. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not for it rained not on air by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says there that Elijah was a man of, you know, subject to, you know, to, 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 to passions. He was an ordinary person. Elijah was not a superman. But, you know, the focus of this uh, devotion this morning is the prayer of faith. Now let's look at it again, where it is mentioned, where it is mentioned. It so let him call for in verse 14 is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and so this morning i want to you know look at you know this phrase the prayer of faith uh, in this particular you know scripture uh, a very you know uh, uh, would I say a very well-known figure in the Bible, Elijah the prophet, is mentioned. And the Bible says he was a man of like passion as we are. And he prayed and locked up the heavens that it will not rain for the space of three years and a half. And it, the Bible says he prayed again and the heaven did give rain. Hallelujah. Now, uh, and it also said that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The prayer of a righteous man avails much. And so it is assumed that Elijah was a righteous man. But the subject of my examination and discussion uh, this morning is the prayer of faith. Because sometimes uh, we wonder why we our prayers are not answered and, and, and we, we think that and we convince ourselves that we have prayed in, in faith. And, and this is very important as we, you know, like I said, in, in this season we are trying to bring out strategies to navigate the post-COVID-19 season. The doors are opening, so maybe some of the borders of nations will be opening you know, business will try to, and people will try to get back to what it looks like normalcy. But a lot of devastation has already taken place due to this coronavirus, you know, uh, pandemic. So now it is important as believers that we have, you know, strategies to go out there and succeed. We don't just want to go out and presume you know that we are going to make it we want to be sure and these strategies we've been talking about uh, since last week is drawn from the bible and here is the, the topic today is the prayer of faith so the prayer of faith i will define it as you know a, a prayer that you pray not only in the closet but you know a prayer that involves action it is the prayer that you leave out because the problem is that many of us pray but we don't leave our prayer we don't leave our prayer faith is not you know without works is dead hallelujah but that's what the bible says so you know if, if we talk about the prayer of faith we're talking about the prayer that we pray and then we put you know our faith into work based on our prayers so it is a prayer that we pray out of faith and then we put that faith into work, into action. We, we follow it up and that's what I want to examine in this morning in this fellowship, the prayer of faith. Because the Bible said this prayer is so powerful, you know, that, you know, more than any, any weapon, you know, he says Elijah used it even though he was a man of in emotions like us. He was subject to emotional distortions like us. But he prayed earnestly and that it should not rain. And it did not rain for the space of three and a half years. And he prayed again. And then he rained. So let's get into looking at the person who has practiced this prayer before Elijah is mentioned in the Bible, the first time his name comes up in the Bible is found in the book of First Kings, chapter number seventeen, and from verse one. Let me just read it for you. 
how we, Elijah is introduced. We don't know his genealogy. We don't know all what we, the information we know about Elijah is spelled out here. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter number 17, verse 1 is there, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. I want you to notice that. So, but according to my word. So now let, let, let's 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 practicalize it. Let's just make it real this morning. Hallelujah. Let's make it real. Now here is the scenario. Uh, let's bring it to the present. <laughs> here is the scenario. I love this. This is you know I'm trying to make it you to, to relate to the present. You know you know you know the present things not in in the past like you know we think of Elijah. Now let's let's assume Elijah is you know is living today, and uh, let's take a White House you know uh, to a White House as the target because Elijah the first time he appeared he spoke to authority Hallelujah he spoke to the authority he said the Bible said he come in and then he goes straight to the White House to the White House is popular let me use White House here he's popular. He goes to the White House, assuming he's in the United States. He goes to the White House, and he has no booking, you know. And you know the security is tight in the White House. You can just—it's not a place you just walk in. It's not a mall <laughs> that you just walk in and then you know you go in and sample things. You have to be booked. You have to go through so many security protocols before you even get into get close to that building so here elijah all of a sudden appears at the gate and assuming that you know as we know there are security cameras all over the place and perhaps the president has one of the monitoring uh, the monitors in his sitting room in his bedroom wherever he is you know he's able to see what's going around the whole premises i'm just assuming that i don't know say that that's the way it is but i'm assuming that just to bring this story back to life in our present day and so here he comes uh, to the gate without any booking without any prior appointment and the uh, the, the the securities uh, at the gate just apprehend and say excuse me sir uh, and he's not well dressed <laughs> he's not dressed in nice because uh, he was not living in the city he was living in the wilderness somehow so, so he appears and then he's not well dressed and says excuse me sir where, where are you going he said i need to see the president and he said what you need to see the do you have an appointment he said i'm sorry i don't have an appointment but i need to see the president right now and today uh, it's not possible it's not possible if you don't have appointment you cannot come in here and say you just want to see the president he insisted you know and, they, and they're trying to drive him away from the from the gate and he's not leaving and the president is sitting in his sitting room and watching the drama at the gate and he calls the chief security officer and says what's going on what's going on there and the chief security says oh, we have this man who is insisting that he must see you today and he said oh, where is it from it's, it's uh, we don't know what is his name his name is elijah the tishbite tishbite well we never heard of any tishbite before well sir that's he says his name and the president, out of curiosity, uh, just want to hear who is this and what does he has to say. So we'll usher him in. Let me just hear him out. I don't want the commotion at the gate there. And so he finds his way into the presidential mansion and is standing before the president. And without any protocol, without you saying, long live the president and all of that. And the only thing Elijah says to the president, as the Lord God liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be rain for three and a half years until I say so. And he walks away. And the president would have said, wow, is this how the Tishbai behaves? But the following year and year after year, the heavens is locked up from that day because of Elijah speaking to the authority, to power. But Elijah declared, before the Lord whom I stand. And, and, and then he said, according to my word. Now, the prayer of faith is a declaration that we made in agreement with the 
counsel and the purposes of God. Let me say that again. You know, the prayer of faith is a prayer that we make in agreement with the counsel and the purposes of God. Prior to that chapter, if you read uh, 1 Kings chapter number 16, you will find out that the Bible says that the Israelites has committed abomination. I don't want to go into that. And one of the uh, one of the things that God promises them was that when they deviate and begin to worship idols, the heaven will become bright. So Elijah was simply enforcing the decision of heaven, saying again elijah was simply enforcing the decision of heaven praise the lord so the prayer of faith is a prayer that we make and we live according to that prayer jesus taught this principle in the book of uh, i think john chapter number 11 uh, on mark chapter 11 rather you know from verse 23 when the bible says when they were coming back you know, and they're passing, and Jesus was hungry, and he saw a fig tree. When he saw the fig tree, the Bible said, because of the extreme hunger that he was suffering from, knowing that it was not even the season for the figs, and the Bible said he went to the fig tree with the hope that, you know, the way the fig tree was, that he might find some kind of fruit on it but the bible said he did not find anything and the bible said he answered i know and i wanted to you know you know check out that he said the bible said he answered and said to the fig tree no man eats from you today so the prayer of faith is the answer that we give to the situation the prayer of faith is the answer that we give to the situation at that point in time in our lives that is that is what it is. That's the answer that we give to 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 a situation. That's what it is. That's what the prayer of faith. It is the answer that we give to the situation, to the circumstances in our lives. That's that's what it is. So when the Bible says when Jesus saw the fig tree, he answered the fig tree. He said to the fig tree, "No man eats from you again from today." Hallelujah. And the following day, and the following day, Peter and the disciples, they noticed that, that when they were passing, that the fig tree has died. And they pointed to the master, and the master said, Have faith. If thou shalt say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, in verse 23, of Mark chapter 11, and shall not doubt in your heart, and shall believe in what you say, then you shall have what you say. So the prayer of faith is a declaration that we make, and we believe in that declaration, and we leave out that declaration. I was reading from, I started reading from, uh, in, in the book of James from verse 12, James chapter 5 verse 12. Uh, I started reading from there because I wanted to point something out to us today. Uh, because we read and we talk about the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man that availeth more. And, and, we, and we quote that one and we emphasize that one. But in verse 12, I believe is the key. We say, above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven, neither, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your year be ye and your nerve be none, let, lest you fall into temptation. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Now, Jesus is, I mean, James is addressing our, the, the use of our tongue in this place. He says, you know, because before you can speak and it come to pass, you need to recognize and understand the power of words and the bible says when jesus said if you say to the mountain and then you believe in what you say now that that's that's where the key you believe in what you say that to believe in what you say is to continually leave out exactly what you say if you said to the mountain 
and be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and, and, and shall believe in what you say not what God says in what you say you shall have whatsoever you say now you have to believe now when it comes to believing in what you say that's where the prayer of faith is it is living out your prayer that's what it is. It is living out your prayer. It is living out your conversation. You know, your confession and your conversation. It is living according to your prayer. You know, now, now, now let, let me make this clear. You, you, some folks pray in the church, you know, and, 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 and after they pray and they make a declaration, I am healed, I am blessed, I am you know, all kind of confession, and they step outside the church. When somebody confronts them, how are you? So, oh, this headache is killing me. <laughs> this pain is killing me. Now, you know, you have just countered what you just said in the church, <laughs> inside the church there, because the prayer of faith is living out your own prayer. Your lifestyle must correspond with the prayer that you make that is the prayer of faith if your lifestyle is opposite your prayer your prayer is going to be non-effective when you pray you have you have to allow yourself to live according to your prayer your prayer you, you, you know must must be translated to your daily life hallelujah your prayer must be translated to your daily life, your lifestyle. If your lifestyle is opposite to your prayers, you're not going to get answers. And this is where a lot of folks are having issues with God not answering my prayers. God is not answering my prayers. I have been praying. I have fasted. You fasted for one week. You fasted for 40 days. And the, and the rest, the remaining 300 and something, you know, 20 something years, I mean days, your life is different from what you have fasted and prayed for 40 days. The prayer of faith is, you know, is living out our prayer, putting our prayer into action. The, our conversation, our lifestyle being in consonant, in agreement to what we pray. Hallelujah. And this is, and once that happens, you know, you can expect that the prayer becomes effective. You know, it is, you know, it is a prophetic action. It is living your life, you know, you know, becomes, you know, prophetic. You're living out your prayer and people do not understand why you choose to live that kind of lifestyle in these modern days because you're living out your prayer. You know, your, your it's not prayer is not just what you do in the church is a lifestyle hallelujah when your prayer becomes your lifestyle that is the prayer of faith you can expect result that's that's what it is that's what it happens elijah leave out his prayer and that's why the bible says he stand and hear the counsel of god he declared the counsel of god he lived according to the to the word of god hallelujah elijah live according to the word of god because we noticed that there was a time that he, he you know he like the bible say he was somebody that was emotional like us and he said god just kill me because i'm alone god said you know you are not the only person living for me there are 700 prophets also so elijah did not just go out and make a decree and then like we normally say we shall decree the bible said we shall decree a thing and it shall be established yes you Yes, yes, that's true. But your your lifestyle must be in agreement with the decrees that you make. Elijah stood before the, the king and said, As the Lord God in heaven lives, you know, there shall not be rain for three and a half years until I said so. Yes, until I said so. But when he left that place, his life was continually in consonant, in agreement with the word of God, with the principles of God. That is the prayer of faith. If your life is not, you know, in agreement with the principles of God, or you know, if your prayers are not in agreement, you know, with the, the prayers can be in agreement, but your lifestyle is not in agreement with the principle of God, you are eventually nullifying your prayers by your lifestyle. 
you are nullifying your prayers by your lifestyle. Your prayers should be in line you know, with the word of God and your lifestyle should be in line of with the word of God. That is the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is the, is the life that we live you know, according to the word of God, it's not just something that happened in the church. It's not something that happened for 30 minutes, for one hour, for 40 days, fasting and praying, 21 days, 7 days, like folks will do at the beginning of the year. I'm not condemning that. I do that. I appreciate it. But after that beginning of the year fasting, what about the rest of the year? Is your life in agreement with your prayers? This is a strategy for us to survive the COVID-19 pandemic. Our prayers must be in line with the Word of God. Our lifestyle must also agree with our prayers. We cannot pray in the church and live a different life. The prayer of faith, that's what the Bible says, is the most effective prayer. When you, when you pray and you go out and you live your life according to what you pray, and your confession is according to what you pray, you know, and you don't confess negative, you don't say negative things. That's why, you know, uh, James talk about our word being yeah, or yes and yes or no and no. And that's what it says. Lest we come into condemnation, lest we nullify our prayers. And then he goes on to tell us that you know the prayer of faith will raise this. The prayer of faith is effective, is powerful. You know, is the prayer. You know, who's a righteous person? None is righteous. The Bible says, but we have righteousness imputed for us through Christ Jesus. And then after you receive grace and mercy from God, then you ought to live according to your confession. So that we have those who say they are Christians and when you look at their lifestyle, it's absolutely opposite of the word of God. But they they say they are Christians. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real believers living according to the word of God. When you live according to the will of God, the power of God will be released when you speak. When you decree a thing, it will be established. Because not only will you decree in the church or in your prayer closet, but when you go out, your life is a prophetic action to the prayers. Hallelujah. Your life is a prophetic action continually, 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 not just for a season. Is you know continually, and then you begin to experience answers in prayers. As we plan to go out there during this season and, and and embrace you know our life, we need to make sure that what we pray in the closet is what we leave outside there. You pray in the closet, you leave it outside. Your prayers in the closet, your prayers in the church. It becomes your lifestyle outside. That is the prayer of faith. And this is what I wanted to share with you this morning. That the prayer of faith, the Bible says, is able to raise the dead. You know, the sick one is able to do exceedingly, you know, abundantly above what we can ask and think. The prayer of faith is effective. It is the lifestyle that we live. If your prayers are going to be effective, it must agree with your lifestyle. Hallelujah. So let's go out there and live out our prayers. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to thank you for being a part of this fellowship, this devotion. And I give glory to the Lord. And I want to pray right now with you a prayer of faith. I want to you to join me in this prayer and I want you to live out your prayer. Whatever is your need, whatever is your your condition right now, I want you to trust God 
as you open your mouth, the Bible says, let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich. You cannot come face the circumstances. You cannot come face the situation. You cannot come face. Let your confession be in agreement with the word of God. And let your lifestyle after this be in agreement. Wake up and say, I am healed. Wake up and say, I am blessed. Wake up and confess, I am rich, I am blessed, I am highly favored. That is what God expects us because that is the will of God. Not, you know, pray and, and thanking God there and you wake up and then after this session you say, whoa, you know, it's, things are terrible with me. You know, this COVID season has destroyed everything. Look, look, your confession must be in agreement with your prayers. The Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. And God says that the thoughts that he thinks towards you are good and not of evil to give you that expected end. God wants to give you that desire, that your request, you know, but in his own way, not in your own way. Hallelujah. I learned that. You know, that God wants to bless us, you know, with everything that we look at for that is good. He wants to bless us, but in his own way, not in, in our own way. In his own time, not in our own time. Hallelujah. And so within the time of praying and the manifestation, your life must be in agreement with your prayers. If your life is not in agreement with your prayers... You, you have eventually modified the prayer that you just prayed. I want to pray with you this morning. No matter what you are going through, no matter what is the condition, let me assure you that the power of God is not limited. It's not limited to time and space. Wherever you are located on earth, you know, the power of God is able to reach you where you are right now. And as we pray in the name of Jesus, you will be healed right now. You will be delivered. Your circumstances will change in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if two of us shall agree as touching on anything that we shall ask on earth, it shall be done unto us. I want you to agree with me in prayer that that sickness in your body is healed right now. I want you to agree with me in prayer that that circumstances is changed to the glory of God. I want you to agree with me that that, what that which you are going through has begun to work out for your own good. No matter what is the condition, I want you to look up unto Jesus this hour. Jesus is still in the miracle working, you know, business. He has not stopped. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so this is a weekend. God wants to bless you and make you have a beautiful and a wonderful weekend. Let's pray right now. Straight forward your hands and let's agree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we come by the blood of Jesus Christ right now. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of the righteous ever. Lord, I ask that the blood of Jesus Christ will speak on, be on our behalf. In wherever the person, wherever we are located right now on the planet Earth, in the name of Jesus, whether it is night, it is daytime, or it is in the morning, whatever is the time right now, for every person that is in agreement right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of Jesus, the resurrection power, the same power that lifted up Jesus from the grave, as death and hell could not hold Jesus captive. I declare that sickness will no longer hold you captive. The financial situation will no longer hold you captive. Marital situation will no longer hold you captive. I command that the power of God will flow into your life, into your situation, into your circumstances. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that infirmity in your body. I rebuke that sickness in your body. I rebuke 
that situation in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible declares that which the Lord has not planted, shall be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is not the planting of God in your life, every circumstance that is not orchestrated by God in your life, right now I command it to be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I command that situation to change. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command your body to receive healing. I declare right now and I decree, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. I break the chains of witchcraft and satanic oppression in your body, in your mind, in your soul, and in your spirit. I declare salvation to come upon you in your household in the name of Jesus. As Jesus declared to Zacchaeus, salvation has come unto you in your household. I declare salvation to you and your household. I declare deliverance to you and your household in the name of Jesus. 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 Receive your miracle this hour in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Let the power, let the power of the Holy Ghost move right now. Move right now into that body. Let the, the, for that person that made you go through surgery, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke it. I say you will not go through. Let healing be effective right now in your body in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke bone diseases in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is the name of that sickness right now, the Bible said that the name of Jesus is highly exalted above every other name. And at the dimension of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in the heavens under the earth and even beneath the earth. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break the power of infirmity. I break the power of satanic oppression in your body, in your mind, in your soul. I said, be set free. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Be thou loosed in the name of Jesus. Be set free right now in your mind, in your body, in your soul, in the name of Jesus. For the Bible declares that if the Son of God shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. I declare total freedom. I declare total healing. I declare total deliverance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you adoration. Thank you for the healing. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you for that man. Thank you for that woman. Thank you for that boy. Thank you for that girl. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let healing be effected. Let deliverance be effected in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I command right now and I commit that person who is so concerned about the state of his business. Lord, the Bible said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lord, I decree and declare supernatural you know, connection for that business in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a resurrection in that business. Let that business come back to life. Let Lord your word says that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask and think. Lord, surprise this person in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord. I speak to that woman that is bedridden right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your life receive. Let your bones receive life. Let your tissues, your tendons, your veins receive life in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is the dry bone situation that you're going through, I speak life into that situation. I speak life into your body. I speak life into your situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of the Most High God overshadow you right now. Let there be a supernatural incubation of the Holy Spirit upon you right now and let there be birthed in your spirit in your soul, in your body, the power of God. And let the glory of God manifest in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Father, I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for the promotion, for the breakthrough, for the financial miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your word said this is the day that you have made and that we will rejoice and be glad in this day. I declare and I decree that you will rejoice and you will be glad this day. You will have a reason to testify. You will have a reason to rejoice this day in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle. Receive your blessing. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your financial you know, miracle. Receive your promotion. In this time that people are losing job, receive your job. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. For the Bible said that the, the God that we said, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you adoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this session. We give glory. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a beautiful day. What a, what a way to start a weekend. It's, everything is going to be all right. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo, what a wonderful session. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for this session of morning devotion. We are excited always, you know, to be of service to our God and to you as ministers, as servants. We are we are doing exactly what God has created us to do. Hallelujah. I know that, you know, later this afternoon, uh, my father and my apostolic covering uh, whom we are under and whom we serve in the kingdom is going to be having Bible study. Uh, the information is it will be displayed at the end of this broadcast. I want you to make sure that you tap into that. The Bible says study to show yourself a proof unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So make sure that you log on and enjoy this powerful session with Apostle Dr. Dinah Carson. It's Monday to Friday and today is actually the, the program is called Relevant Pulpit. You know, you know, men of God coming to discuss, you know, the present issues and issues that affect the church. And it is also an opportunity for you to ask questions. So, you know, that is a great forum for you to ask questions. Whatever it is that is bothering you, you can have opportunity to ask questions either for scripture that you don't understand or clarity of whatever it is. You know, it, and Thursday, there's even a special session that he holds, you know, you know, ask the, the kingdom voice. All this information, you know, will be the you know displayed at the end of this broadcast and or you can simply go to uh, you know, dot org and you will see all that you know information there and and it's going to be a great blessing to you hallelujah the world is full of people who are hurting many live their lives in fear shame loneliness, depression, and the list goes on and on. What if I told you that you could help change the lives of hurting people? Would you do it? Most people really desire to make an impact in the lives of others around the world. They just don't have a context that supports their desire. Well, Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries invites you to do what you've always wanted to do. Help change lives around the world. What exactly is Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries doing to change lives? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries is taking the good news of the gospel of the kingdom around the world through television, radio, and the kingdom reformation crusades, and people's lives are being changed. How can you help change lives? When you sow a monthly seed of $20 or more, you help share the love of God to the masses. You help send missionaries throughout the world to impact communities for God's kingdom. And most importantly, you help win souls for the kingdom of God. 
All it takes is your monthly seed of $20 or more, and you can help change the world. To partner with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries today, simply go online to drdanacarson.com forward slash partners or call 281-824-4190. That's 281-824-4190. You can also mail in your monthly seed to 7401 Gulf Freeway, Houston, Texas 77017. Thank you in advance for partnering with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries, and we look forward to taking the kingdom to the world with you.